With the Google Translator API, you can translate to almost any language and Google Translate uses an intelligent algorithm for doing this translation. What we want to build in this video is here, like you can see, we have a chat and then he is translating this origin language to another target language. First of all, I like to start with the configuration and therefore you go to your console cloud Google and create an account and then you can type in the search cloud translation API and then you select here the first one and then you should see this page here and then you should click on enable and make sure that you have also your billing set up because for the Google translation API you need this billing enabled and after it you see this screen here if everything is right and if you have enabled your billing correctly. Then you need to go to the credentials section and create a new credential and then we select here API key. And this API key you need to copy here and we need it for the translation therefore you need an API key for the Google service. In our application I have already created here some chat screens so I don't want to go over all of them because I think this is like really basic stuff and also here is some drop down menu where you can drop some widgets. If you want to know more details about everything you get every time the whole source code with the first link in the description box and with the second link you can also get my Flutter course where I teach you how you can boost your efficiency with Flutter and VS Code and IntelliJ. Then we create a translation API file and here inside of this class we paste our key inside. Now we create here this translate method and this gets two parameters. First of all the message which we want to translate and then we need to supply here the language code and here inside we have then this language code which we also need to pass here inside. Then we call the HTTP post to make an API request to the Google API server and make sure that you also import here this HTTP library. So just write this also here, this link and there inside we need to set three parameters. The first one is the target, our language code. Then we also need to set the API key and this is really important and you also need to set the message obviously. And then we get a response back and from there on we simply check if the response was successful, if it is a 200 and we also do the other case if it is not successful. So let's implement the successful case. So first of all we decode the body property of our response and then we extract here our translation. So this is from the Google API. We need to go here into some maps and lists and so on and this is how you get this data. And then at the end we can return here this translated text which we get from the response back. And an important thing is also to escape this here because inside of this translated text there are some HTML characters sometimes and therefore we also need to call this HTML unescape. And for this one you need a plugin so make sure that you have put the HTML unescape plugin inside. Now we also want to handle the other case. If the response is not successful then we simply want to throw an exception right now. Now we are going to our chat design and here I have my chat page. So it's basically this page which you see here on the right side. And here inside we have a list view builder and then we show all the chat messages under each other. So every time it's a row. And this message widget will then display it on the left side or on the right side depending of if it is me or not. And now what we want to do is we want to add the translation. So we have here two fields, language one and language two. And these are the languages which we have here selected on the top. And what we want to do is to wrap this message widget into a new widget. And this is called translation widget, which we want to create later. And here inside we have a builder class and here we get later our translated message back. Now we get here also the two fields from language and to language. So this is depending on which site is here selected. And then here inside we put into our translation 
widget first of all the message which we have typed so this is the origin message here at the top then we also put the from language inside and to language so this is basically the language to which it later should be translated and then we also need to set here into our message widget which has right now the chat message here in this message property and also in the translated message property we need to set here the translated message instead because before I showed here two times the same message and now we want to translate here this second message and therefore we put here the translated message inside. Now we go over and create this translation widget and here inside I have created this translation widget with all the parameters which we put inside before. And now here inside of our state class we create a field for our translation so we will store our translation here inside and then we use here this future builder to call our API and here inside we put our translation API translate method inside so this was exactly this method which we have created in the beginning and here inside we put the two parameters inside which we need first of all the message and the two language code and here we get only the two language in this form of this English and we need to get it in the other form of our translations so we need to get it like this and therefore I call this utils method here this utils get language code so let's call this here and this is then putting our two language here to this language code and this is going then here inside to our translation API now we go here further with our future builder so we check here the connection state and in case of waiting we want to create here a new method and here we check basically if we have no translation in the beginning then we simply want to show nothing you can also show here instead of the container a loading screen or something and if it is that we have a translation then we want to call our widget builder and give our translation here inside and then our builder can care about how this translation is shown here in our UI and if you remember here inside of our chat page inside of our builder we have then this message widget which is then caring about how this widget is here displayed and we only give you this translated message back and this widget will then care about the remaining thing how to display it all right so this is about the waiting now we have here to care about the has error so if it is an error then we simply put into our translation property an error message and otherwise we want to put here the snapshot data inside of our translation and in both cases of an error and also of a success we want to call this builder and there we put our translation message inside so if we have an error case then he will put this message here inside and this will then display it here under it and now we can try this application out so make sure that you also put this inside and let's hot restart this application and now you see if I press here for example French then he will translate the initial text to the target text and we also can choose the other languages and he will always do the translation and the same thing for the left side if we want to translate the left side then we can also choose here a different language now I also want to quickly show you why we put here in our translation API this HTML unescape inside and why we need it and therefore I hot restart this application and then I translate it to different language let's say French and then you see here there are some characters which are not correct showing because they are in HTML and therefore we put here this unescape every time in front and now if we go here again to the same thing with this unescape then you see that he is displaying it correctly for all of you who want to try the translation of Google out and don't want to activate the billing maybe you have some test projects or whatever then you also can use this translator plugin and this is basically doing everything without an API key and I will also quickly show you how this works so make sure that you put into your pubspec jaml file this translator plugin inside and then we go here to our translation api and instead of this translate we will create a second method 
And here inside we create the second method with the second API, which is for free and where you don't need the billing account. And here inside we get also the message, the from language code, the to language code. And then we make here use of this Google Translator class from our plugin. And here we can call the translate method. And here we simply put our message inside. We need to set a from language code and to language code inside. And you can also choose here, for example, to have here from automatically. So you don't need to put it inside, but I will put it inside. And from this translation, we get then the text. And this is then our translated text, which we want to return. In our translation widget, we simply then exchange here this translation API. So I will comment this one here out. And below we put then here the second method inside where we call the translate second. And we also need a language code. So over the to language code, we also put the from language code and we also call again the same utils class to transform this language here to a language code. And that's it what we need to do. And then we can hot restart. And now he is using this account without billing. And like you can see, this is also working pretty good and you can translate then everything without billing. You can do it for free. And this is basically what you can use for your test projects if you want to try something out, but don't want to implement the billing account. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon. Bye.